I am Dr. Prashant. I am a biotechnologist. Actually, I am working in the field of antibiotic resistance of bacteria. How I started my work in this field? I would like to share my experience with you. In 2005, one of my relatives was admitted to a hospital. She was actually suffering from burn injuries and the burn percentage were more than 76%. I was closely monitoring her. I found that the physicians were prescribing an antibiotic, plus one an antibiotic. Then I had a discussion with the physicians that why are we not going for a laboratory test rather than going an antibiotic plus an antibiotic. The reply was that if you go for a laboratory test, it will take a time period of about 48 hours. Sadly, the patients come to the injuries the very next day. It shook me up that if a time period is required 48 hours for a laboratory test and what prescriptions were given were just a trial and error method. Since I was working in that same field, I decided to start an antimicrobial resistance or antibacterial resistance in those cases. Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Neeraj and I'm a microbiologist. Hope all of you are in your excellent state of health. But each one of us sitting here has visited physician once in our life for certain minor illnesses or certain major infections. And most of the time, a list of medicine is being prescribed by the doctor. Even if the doctor doesn't prescribe, we ask for it. So at least give me something so that I can feel better in two days. So the doctor prescribes an antibiotic, you know, antibiotic that kills the bacteria. But is it actually required all the time? Do we really require antibiotic? What are antibiotics? These are those drugs that kill the bacteria. But if I'm having an infection like urinary tract infection, a tuberculosis, a woofing cough, or a sore throat, then we need an antibiotic. But if I'm having an infection like pneumonia, bronchitis, or an ear infection, then maybe I may require an antibiotic or may not require an antibiotic depending upon the type of infections. But if I am suffering from common cold, flu, or COVID, those are all viral diseases. In that case, I don't require any antibiotic, but still are prescribed. This indiscrimination prescriptions has led, some data was, was generated, and World Health Organization came out a statement that 30% to 100% of the antibiotic prescriptions are overdone. Uh, yes, some of the instances occurred with my daughter when she was three years old and she was suffering with uh, a urinary tract infection and she was treated with an antibiotic, but the fever persisted. So uh, she was switched to some higher antibiotic, but that also didn't work. So I decided to go for a urine culture and sensi sensitivity test. And the results came out in 48 hours. You know, one bacteria multiplies in just 20 minutes. So you can just guess the number of bacteria that will multiply in the next 48 hours or 3000 minutes. So that period was very crucial and she suffered a lot. And the results were literally surprising that whatever antibiotics were given to her were literally ineffective. And there was just one antibiotic that could, that could treat her. So immediately we began with that antibiotic and she got cured in just two days. So what exactly happened? Why the antibiotic treatment did, that, uh, did not respond earlier? This was due to the resistance that was developed in the bacteria for that particular antibiotics. How the bacteria become resistant? Which is, who is the culprit? The antibiotic or the bacteria? The basis lies behind the Darwin's therapy of natural selection, that is the fitness for the survival. When you grow bacteria in presence of antibiotics, the bacteria are very small but smart creatures. They make the changes in their genes and find out a way to survive in the presence of antibiotics. But the story doesn't end here. They transfer those genes to the other bacteria also. Uh, yes, and... Why are the bacteria behaving like, like this? Why have they become so stubborn? Uh, now, there are a number of reasons for this. Like initially described, it is over-prescription of antibiotics when not required. Even the antibiotics given are not taken properly by the patient, terminating uh, the dose of antibiotics in between. Then antibiotics are being used in agriculture for the livestock, the poultry, the poor sanitary conditions in the hospitals and the clinics. 
even in the surroundings. And of course, there is a lack of rapid diagnostic procedures. Uh, and uh, the new antibiotics are not being discovered from the last four decades. So the pace of resistance of antibiotic is increasing as compared to the pace of discovery of new drugs. This goes on continuing, then uh, antibiotics will become a new crisis in the future and deadly infections will not be treated. And of course, this is going to prove disastrous for uh, mankind. And uh, very sadly to uh, say here that the way we have been using these antibiotics all over has created super bugs. Super bugs, a new terminology. Now what are these super bugs? Super bugs are those bacteria that have been become resistant to most of the prescribed antibiotics today. The first super bug was found in 2011 in India from a Swedish personnel of Indian origin and it was named as NDM1, New Delhi Metallobetalactamase 1. Subsequently, it was found throughout the globe. What comes up with this? If it is spreading, yes, there is some agency that regularly monitors this, and that is World Health Organization. World Health Organization came out with a data that the deaths which are there due to the superbugs is at 1.5% per annum, and it will be a small goal for superbugs to have 10 million deaths in 2050. Oh my God. So how to curb this? How to stop this? Now, uh, how about if our doctors get uh, a proper information of which antibiotic is to be given for the treatment of an infection at a proper time? And how we can do this? So that can be done by performing certain microbiological investigations in the laboratory. So what are these tests actually? So what we do is we just take out the bacteria from the sample. So if it is a urine infection, the bacteria is present in the urine, you take that bacteria from the urine, you grow it into a petri plate, you see the effect of the antibiotic on that bacteria. But as discussed previously, this test requires a time period of 48 hours. And 48 hours is a long time for the infection to spread. Uh, actually, there are certain other drawbacks also that these tests, tests uh, require sophisticated equipments, they require trained persons, they are very costly, and most of the time they are not available in all the laboratories. With my earlier incidents and my expertise in the molecular biology, I had started already working on the antibacterial resistance, that those bacteria which have become resistant due to various types of antibiotics. For this, I required the bacterial cultures which I used to get from Dr. Neeraj, and used to work on them, collect the cultures and maintain them, analyze them with all. Yes, during that time I was uh, working in a microbiology department of a medical college, and I was performing all the diagnostic microbiology work over there. And during the span of 10 years, I found a gradual rise of antibiotic resistance in different uh, types of uh, bacteria. And uh, uh, this was actually uh, alarming. It was dauntingly alarming to see that rise in the resistance. There are a number of bacteria that have been become resistant. I started with a bacterium that normally resides on the skin. It's an opportunistic pathogen. And it is the first bacteria in which the resistance was developed. The name is Staphylococcus aureus. It is the pus-forming bacteria. I used to get the cultures from Neeraj and perform the antimicrobial resistance by molecular analysis and found that in those organisms, the resistance is slowly developed. Uh, meantime, I joined the university campus uh, department of microbiology, and I already was collaborating with Dr. Prashant. So we came up with small projects, and we collected the other bacterial cultures also. And uh, then we went for uh, some publications after we got the preliminary uh, results. And uh, with all those, uh, we collected almost 2,700 plus different types of bacteria in our lab. I collected those Staphylococcus aureus cultures and started working with it with molecular analysis and parallel with all the conventional methods that are routinely used in the laboratories. The results were promising, but still I was not satisfied in those cases. I wanted a test that should give out the results in almost eight to 10 hours. I had visited number of laboratories, we have visited with a number of uh, clinical microbiology labs. I found that it was only working on the bench. 
but they don't had any sophisticated equipmentations. I wanted a test that should give it in eight to 10 hours, does not require any sophisticated equipment, should be performed in a facility constrained laboratory and can be performed by a technician. And so we started with those kits. After several rounds of discussions with Dr. Neeraj and the research teams, we planned an experiment for that. Yes, initially we uh, devised a kit for detection of a pus forming bacteria. Uh, which is known as a methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is a most stubborn one. Uh, and uh, we wanted a kit uh, which can be ready to be used. So you just take the bacteria, take the antibiotic, and uh, then uh, you add some colored reagent so that the bacteria can convert it into different color. So we wanted that uh, the live bacteria should give a color and the dead bacteria will not give a color. So initially we came with a yellow color uh, reagent and uh, we saw that uh, the bacteria turned to dark yellow, but it could not differentiate between uh, the pale yellow color of the medium and the dark yellow after the reaction. So we wanted some vibrant uh, molecules uh, for proper discrimination. I started with screening of number of molecules and came out with one chromogen whose starting color was almost colorless, but when the bacteria was growing in the presence of an antibiotic, they changed that color of the medium to a dark blue color. The results were very promising. We prepared the kit. And we found that the results could be obtained within six hours. Then we analyzed all the cultures with the kit as well as the old conventional methods and the molecular analysis. The results were very promising. So we went for a publication in a high impact factor journal in a nature publication group. We filed a patent which we have obtained it. So the results came out in just uh, six to seven hours. So compared to the 48 hours of the conventional methods. So it was like a uh, mind uh, boggling 40 hours saved. So that was a Eureka moment for us. And uh, then we didn't stop here actually. So we made a kit for one bacteria, but you know different uh, infections caused by different bacteria. So you wanted to test even the other bacteria. So we wanted to screen other bacteria. We wanted to screen other chromogens. So we wanted funds for that. So we went to Rajiv Gandhi Science and Technology Commission Mumbai for a project and funds, uh, which we were granted. And then we collected more amount of uh, bacteria, different bacteria, and we screened a large number of chromogens. And finally, we found one chromogen, which uh, gave a consistent results with all the different types of bacteria. And uh, uh, the results were promising, and uh, it gives uh, concurrent results with that of the standard methods and also confirmed by the genetic test. So uh, here uh, we now have a kit for all the bacteria. For this kit, we have filed a patent and we are in process of transferring the technology. See, this was an indigenous kit, a small step in the self-sufficiency in the country. The cost of the per kit was just rupees 100 for per bacteria in comparison with rupees 500 plus for other tests that are routinely being used in the laboratories. We modified the kit in such a way that now it can detect resistance to 21 different antibiotics simultaneously now. Came out with this part, but it was not an easy task. It took almost 10 to 11 years to come out with this. We had a patent, we had a good publication. I could have stopped at that particular point. But my continuous insistence and my teams, Dr. Neeraj and uh, the research students, continuous dedication, 